from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell and I'm in Nottingham this week on a little bit of a road trip for some of the hundred matches here in a hotel where the Trent Rockets are staying. So it's nice to catch up with a few people last night, including the coach, Andy Flower, the ex-England coach, of course. At the same time, it's nice to know that there is a test match being played at Lords with the South African men in town. And that won't be the case this time next year because... The schedule clears August of international cricket and it's being left fully open for the 100. The men's ashes is going to be fitted into June and July. Whether that's then going to be the case going forward every single year, we will wait to see. I think it's a huge shame that there's that there wouldn't be any international cricket men's or women's in August, the height of the summer when kids are on school holidays, because, yes, they might get a 100 game in their locality. That might only be once in a couple of weeks or so. They need some other cricket to watch as well and make the 100 the gateway into test cricket and the longer form. But at the moment, we've got both, so we're happy. Hi, it's Jim Maxwell for the ABC in Sydney. And uh, the, the joke of the moment has been not about cricket here, but uh, rugby league. The boss of rugby league uh, went on to a press conference and said, um, I'm pleased to be able to tell you that the rugby league uh, grand final this year will be played um, in Melbourne. He said, oh, no, no, that's a joke. That's a joke. So <laughs> hey, it's going to be played in Sydney. So that's probably the funniest thing that's happened here. The cricket season's still a month away, and the most of us are still. <laughs> and I'm Sunil Gupta for All India Radio New Delhi, where the big, big news is something we've been speculating about, I think, in almost every show when the IPL comes up, and that is the women's IPL, which has just been announced a couple of days ago, is going to be in March 2023. And there are going to be five teams, and some of the big names from the men's IPL are looking for women's teams as well. It could be a sixth team. I believe because the response has been so great. It's going to be one month long and uh, five or six teams. So everything that we were wishing for is going to happen, at least in the women's IPL. And it's going to be termed, as I'm sure you can understand, the WIPL. So no surprises there. But the WIPL is going to be there, ladies and gents. And it's going to be there in March 2023. That is news to be celebrated because finally India have woken up to the possibilities <laughs> that the women's game can offer in the country. And so the degree to which India's women and the women's team have had to sort of stand up sort of almost on their own in these international events to say, look, look what we can do. They haven't yet won a gold, as it was at the Commonwealth Games, or a world trophy, but surely that will come. And if they've got this greater depth, professionalism behind them, those numbers will grow, the depth will grow, the experience in high-pressure matches will grow. So fabulous news. Now, as I mentioned, I am at the 100 uh, this week, but it seems scarcely believable that a new and even faster-paced, and I think probably fair to say quirkier cricket tournament is about to begin next week. The 60 is what it's called, and it's being used to kick off the Caribbean Premier League season. And in some ways, it's what you might expect. You might have inferred from the name that it is a 60 ball tournament. It's a T10 format, so 10 overs of six balls each. However, there are some pretty strange twists. Sonal, you've been having a little look at the rules, haven't you? What have you, um, what have you taken away as the, the headline twists to the rules or the laws? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I remember reading about the Roaring Sixties when I was a child, about the, uh, in geography, and these, I assume, are going to be the Roaring Sixties. But let me tell you, the difference in this from any other cricket that we normally watch is that each batting team has six wickets rather than the usual ten. And the batting teams can unlock a third power play, by, uh, power play over by hitting two sixes in the first 12 balls, which I dare say prediction is going to come down to about the first 10 balls very, very soon. And if teams fail to bowl their 10 overs, within 45 minutes, a fielder will be removed, not just moved out of a circle or whatever, removed for the final six balls. So, and, 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 to add a bit of e-gaming to this entire uh, scenario, is that fans will be able to vote for a mystery-free hit online. What that's going to be is a mystery. Well, there's a lot of changes, isn't there? There's one rule from that that you could easily translate into the test match game and tell you that is to remove one fielder if they go over time because the number of the number of times that test match day doesn't get those overs in. But yeah, that's one definitely quirk, quirky rule of the of the 60. Um, it's just it's another short form tournament, isn't it? Where the focus is on short, sharp, of the moment, 
entertainment. And that's what I'm enjoying of the 100, the matches themselves. In the moment, it's great fun. I can't say that I come away particularly, you know, remembering key battles or really memorable moments, except, you know, remember who, who hit the first 100 of the 100. Uh, and Will Jack's getting then the highest score of the 100, uh, following on from Will Smead. Or, you know, Alana King's taking the first hat-trick uh, for the women in the 100. Moments like that, I remember. But it doesn't feel like it's sort of a lasting sort of legacy. It's not that sort of sustenance, if you like, uh, that, that the narratives provide from, from the longer form of the game. Jim, I'm guessing it's not sort of going to take over from the 60s isn't going to take over from international cricket as your favourite form of the game certainly not from test matches but you have been speaking to somebody who is a very big fan of the 60s I have indeed the universe boss Chris Gale he's the ambassador for the 60s and I started off asking him why the fans should be so excited about it the fans are already excited about it, and that's why they should. They are they are already excited about the 60 because I know guys from the UK flying in for the 60. Um, I get a lot of questions about the 60. It's just the new rules, and everybody's excited to see how much it will work. You know, will it will it will it play off accordingly based on this based on the rules the 60 set. You know, so everybody looking forward to that as well. And you know, the good thing about it. We'll have our big players playing in that tournament as well. You know, we have international players playing in the 60s as well. And it's only three days, you know, so it's very short and spicy. So it's going to be phenomenal. And, you know, they, they, they're looking for something, something totally different. Do some of the innovations that the 60s bringing to the table uh, have a place with uh, modifying T20 cricket? What? What would you do with T20 cricket, if anything, to improve it? T20 cricket is fine, you know, but when you look at um, the 60, the 60 can be in like an, an Olympics, you know, pretty much it's a very shorter format than T20. So the, it, can, it can add into different um, world champions, whatever you want to put it, uh, Olympics, you know, you, you can have that sort of thing, you know, and it can be something where, say, hey, we can play for a gold medal, you know, so it's something that they can look at as well. And with the rules as well, it, it, it's 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 spicy, um, it's innovative as well. So it, it's very good. It's very so interesting, man. So it's a lot. A lot can happen with the sixty. Now, what about this trophy? It's called the Universe Boss Trophy. How do you feel about that? Listen, to me. That's the biggest trophy in the entire history of cricket. I can't tell you that for sure. There's nothing bigger than that trophy. There's nothing <laughs> bigger than that Universe Boss Trophy. That's the biggest trophy. Not even. A World Cup trophy is bigger than the Universe Boss Trophy. I'm telling you that straight up right now. Okay? Yeah. You said it's like the Muhammad, the Muhammad Ali of cricket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, like a butterfly and sing like a bee. <laughs> Part one of Jim with Chris Gale. <laughs> the Universe Boss Trophy. I had to laugh. Does, does he mean there's nothing bigger, Jim? Is that in terms of physical size or is he actually talking stature? I'm <laughs> hoping he was just talking about the physical size. It looks like a big trophy, that, that is for sure. Not quite as big as, as Chris Gale. Uh, but he's, he's certainly a good salesman, isn't he? The one interesting thing I took from that, Jim, was when he mentioned the Olympics, because this does put another form of cricket on the table, actually, doesn't it? When the ICC are looking at putting cricket into the Olympics, we've had T20 cricket in the Commonwealth Games. We've got the 100 tournament going on in the UK at the moment. And then the 60 is is even more condensed. And if it is more like a sort of, well, this is a three-day festival of cricket, which you could see perhaps extending. It's another format, perhaps the ICC. Well, it will be on the table for them to consider. There's no doubt that uh, there's more diversity in cricket, good or bad, um, than in a, any other sport. So there'd be no surprise if we had a 60 or 70, 77 sunset strip. Sounds good to me. I remember the television show. Anyway, I'm sure they'll come up with something. If they get the Americans involved, uh, as they will, um, because there's going to be a lot of money coming from that part of the world into cricket, whether it's before or during, after the Olympics. It's it's all about to occur. So um, uh, the thing is, um, do we really need this competition? I, I'm not so sure. Anyway, that's a question I put to Chris. What do people need to understand? You know, the game, the game actually changed. It's a business orientated now. Um, it's not so more detailed in sporting. You know, if you really look what's happening around the world, uh, even with these new leagues starting as well, you mentioned the 60 to the new additional. Um, the, you have the 100 as well. 
So everybody see the bigger picture, you know, being more innovative with the game as well. And the game spreading from more a business side of things. And it's, it's, it's a beneficial to the players as well. You know, so you have to look at that as a point of view as well. Um, who's to ever put on the league, they will be beneficial from it as well. Uh, once they get excitement and once they get the, the people involved in it and the people to actually like what's happening as well, then it will be something huge, just like an IPL. You know, so I don't want people to think that the game actually changing and too much things happening now. We have to look at the bigger picture. You know, it's all about business. You know, the, 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 the whole gentleman game kind of changed a bit. You know, it's not really that, that gentleman sport. We used to acknowledge it and say, hey, it's a gentleman sport. It's a business sport. And you're going to have people pumping money into these new, 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 new sort of events. And, you know, players have to choose when and what they want to do at the end of the day. You say business, but uh, I get the feeling you still think test cricket's worth playing. It's the number one form of the game. And, and there's a lot of tradition, not just business, around the world of cricket. Yeah, but even test cricket. Test cricket is the ultimate. Test cricket is number one. But when you look at what's happening with test cricket now, who are the, team, who are the countries getting most test matches? You have to look at that as well. It's business. You know, a team like West Indies, South Africa would play a six match per year. England, India, Australia playing 15 test matches. Those teams, those teams bringing in money, you know, so that the, 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 the lower ranked team will suffer, which they are suffering because they are not yeah. getting the same amount of game or the same treatment like an India, um, an England, and an Australia would get. You know, so it's unfair to those teams. It's very unfair. That's why I stress the game change. It's a business. You know, so the lower ranked team kind of suffer. And those teams that I just mentioned, they are the one making the bulk of money. And their, their players have been looked after perfectly. And the other guys, you know, struggle in that department. So is 50 over cricket the, the one format of the game that's under threat uh, through the squeeze of competitions? I, I think I think so, yeah. It's a bit because you play so much T20 cricket and then when you, when you start to play a 50 over now, it's like, damn. It's like, you play, it's like you're on the, the field like the entire day. It's like 50 over take, like it's like a test match. <laughs> it feels like that. You know, it feels like that because you play so much T20 cricket and you just bang, bang, bang and the game finish. And then when it, when it gets to that 50 over now, it's so dragged out a bit as well. It's a bit, you know, it gets so dragged out and a bit, you know, boring to an extent. And then you have to accelerate back in the end. So I think that's what happened as well, you know. So it's, it's a bit tricky now. Now, what about you? Uh, rising 43 years of age, the universe boss, what are your plans for the future as a, as a cricketer? I'm, a, I'm actually in preparation. I'm playing the 60 for sure. I'm um, playing a 60. Um, I'm not playing a CPL. Um, but where cricket stand now, I still play some cricket. And I'm actually coming to Australia to play some club games. But um, definitely, international cricket is pretty much off the radar. You know, um, international cricket, cricket is pretty much off the radar. Um, I have some legend leagues coming up as well in September. I'll join those masterclass and, you know, rub some shoulders with them as well. So, you know, I still have some cricket to play. I'm still young, pretty hard and tempting. The best body in the world, so why not play and give the fans, you know, a few more things to, to cheer about? That is the former West Indies captain Chris Gale speaking to our very own Jim Maxwell. He's he's always a sort of remarkable. Listen, isn't he? He can be very inconsistent in his views. I do remember one time a while ago him saying he wouldn't have been so sad if Test cricket died out, but he's very much saying no. Test cricket is still the number one. He values his you know one hundred odd caps. Um, he regrets not having won a 50 over World Cup with the West Indies yet, albeit now, saying that, yeah, it just feels like a slow, slow, tired old format when you're used to playing bang, bang, 20 over cricket all the time. Some serious points in there as well, which I did take. And Sunil, one of those being about, you know, cricket being a business game now. And you just wonder, you know, how much money, particularly from a tournament like the 60, goes back into West Indies cricket or building it up or is it just all about the franchises the people who have invested in that their own personal pockets well I'm sure that there's going to be some sort of distribution mechanism <clears throat> as indeed it is for the IPL or any other franchise cricket but I think the other point that he made um, uh, about uh, this being a business now business as you all know is that famous saying you give the people what they want and they'll pay for it so the question really is to see is this novelty 
which will wear off very quickly because there are other formats to follow. <clears throat> and I think, you know, the proof of the pudding is going to be not in the eating, but is going to be in the longevity of something like the 60. And I was going to say, listen, the 60 is too much. Let's make it, as Jim said, you know, the 40s or the 77s or whatever it's going to be. But, you know, the, the principle of, of the other, the other principle of uh, business is something I've said before, and I'll say again, that the good thing about this is that it gives a lot of the fringe players, people who don't really have, a, um, you know, a career in international cricket. Look at India. I mean, there's thousands of cricketers, really. You know, only 11 can play in the, in, you know, in the international team. So the IPL was a very big window to see some young talent, to give them livelihoods. And you know, and I've spoken this about this before, you know, the backgrounds they come from, where, you know, their, their parents were cooking in tent shacks or they were daily wage laborers and so on and so forth. So I think it's a terrific thing for them. But the international game is going to be the acme. It's going to be the pinnacle of anybody's career if you play international cricket. What are you going to find? Well, the people like him who, you know, pass their prime, if I dare I say that, or, you know, in their retirement years are going to be taking this. I think it's great for them because they still carry an image. A large part of this game is image, to have you know, people that you know, at least some of them participating in the game. So it's going to be, that's going to be the crowd pillar. You're not just going to go and see only some unknowns. So I think that that is really where I think the business aspect comes in, gives them livelihood, makes them see the world. I think that's a terrific thing. And uh, of course, I mean, if the spectators like it, well then, who's to argue? But then somewhere along the line saying, you must, you must have the danger in your mind, is this dumbing it down too much? You know, and uh, when, when he mentioned this being in the Olympics, my heart shrank, quite honestly. I honestly don't think if we have something like this in the Olympics, I don't think the Olympics, I think the Olympics should have something in cricket, most definitely, but not this. And I think the real McCoy will always be international cricket. Well, that is all we've got time for on this week's Stumped It on All India Radio. Uh, if you have missed any of that interview, you can go back, listen again on the podcast. Uh, we're on Twitter as well. We're at BBC WS Sport. Use the hashtag BBC Stumped. And you can, in fact, watch that interview with Chris Gale as well on YouTube. Go to the BBC World Services YouTube channel. My thanks to Sunil Gupta and Jim, Ma Jim Maxwell and to all of you for listening. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. From the BBC World Service, in association with ABC and All India Radio, this is Stumped.